All right, so my name's Josh. I'm gonna be talking about the rule of 72. Who's heard of the rule of 72? A couple of you. So it's, I wanna start this off by saying I'm not a financial professional or anything like that. We're not actually gonna talk about money really. It's, it's much more of a mathematical thing that we're getting into. So uh, the rule of 72 uh, boils down to this idea of compounding interest. So a common example of compounding interest, or I think we might have all heard of Albert Einstein and, and how he said it's basically the greatest mathematical discovery ever. Uh, and it's Albert Einstein, so there's some clout to that. <laughs> so compounding interest, if we break it down into a simple example, if you were to do a 2% quarterly uh, increase uh, over the course of a year, it ends up being 8.24%. So it's pretty close to being linear increase, except when year over year over year, you start to deviate. So what I ended up doing was uh, learning this fun new program, and I made a graph. And so what we do here is the green line is linear 2% every quarter, and there's no compounding versus compounding here where it's, it's more parabolic. So right here, if you look at the doubling time, so once you have a 100% increase, it's roughly 34-ish occurrences. So if you do it quarterly, it's about nine years, or a little more than, or right under nine years. That's compounding quarterly. Uh, when we talk about the rule of 72, it's uh, compounding annually. So the idea behind doubling time, so you have a value over the course of what number of years, at a certain rate of interest, will that value double? So we take uh, natural log of two over the natural log of one plus whatever that rate is. So natural log of two over natural log of 1.08 for an 8% interest rate uh, ends up being, uh, I think, nine years. So the rule of 72 is an approximation. So it's not, it's very, very accurate between six and 10%. When you get less than 6%, there's another number. You end up uh, using 69.3 or higher than that. There's, um, there's an adjusted rule of 72. Let's talk about how this kind of breaks down. So a real world example, 72 divided by eight. So 8% 8 rate of return, nine years to double. And so the math there ends up being effectively, it's, it's nine years, two days, eight hours. So it's pretty accurate at 8% 8, 8 rate. Where it starts to break down is, let's bump it up to a 20% rate. So the math of 72 over 20 is 3.6 years, when in reality, it's 3.8 years. So it's off by about two and a half months. So it's not very accurate at higher rates. The rule of 72 adjusted takes that into account. So we start out with 72 over the rate, but add a little bit more to it. So in this case, it's the rate minus eight over three. So at that 20% example, 72 plus 20 over it's 12 divided by three is four. So it's 76 over 20, which is 3.8 years. So at that point, you've got a difference of about 14 hours. So it's much more accurate. So that's the rule of 72 in a, in a nutshell. Uh, at the end of the day, it's really just math. Uh, and more recently, I've been playing around with this little calculator that I built. And it was something that Chris and I had talked about during Summer Summit. And the idea is you can punch in some numbers and figure out varying rates and, and uh, number of years that it compounds and so on and so forth. It will tell you roughly how much money you have. So in this case, we start with a principal of $500 investment. We don't introduce any more contributions. And the rate of 70, or the rule of 72 basically says, if we're doing 72 divided by 7% interest, at about 10 year mark, at about the 10 year mark, we're gonna double our value, which you see right here, we started out at $500. On the 10 year mark, we will have $1,000. So if we were bumping up to 8%, it ends up being at the nine year mark, which we had found was 72 divided by nine, then eight. So, with this, you know, it's, this is more of a concrete example of compounding interest than when you would use the rule of 72.
anybody have any questions? Is that live or is it just on your old machine? It's live. It's at investment.wtf. <laughs> <laughs> so. Any other questions? That's a good investment in a domain name. Yeah. <laughs> It's totally worth it. Filled with trust. Yeah, it's totally worth it. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Okay, cool. Actually, I have a question. Okay. What made you choose this as a lightning talk topic? Uh, so I had been toying around with these numbers for a while. I, there are a lot of investment calculators online, and they don't actually take into account the fact that you might want to contribute more year over year. So you could put in a base amount, let's say I want to invest $100 a month. But next year, with inflation, maybe I want to invest 3% more year over year. So I want to track inflation at 3.5% or whatever that ends up being. Uh, let's say I wanted to do more every month, and how would that impact it? So that got me digging into, well, I had already kind of, I had to remember the rule of 72. Obviously, that isn't able to take into account increasing contributions uh, monthly, quarterly, annually, anything like that. So this compounds annually, it doesn't compound quarterly, which would be probably a little bit more accurate and, and more aligned with the market and more of those plans. Does the adjusted rule of 72 work for the lower percentages? No. You just showed it for the higher one. Right, so there's another formula, it's e, the EM rule. I can't remember who came up with it, but that's that. It's their, their last names. But it's another rule. It ends up being that a lower uh, numerator ends up being more accurate at lower percentages. So I think the number is 69.3. So for anything, maybe at 2%, you would use 69.3 as the numerator uh, instead of um, 72. Right. Yeah. yeah, and that um, the actual doubling time is that is accurate. And the other thing with there, so the numerator on that was the natural log of two. If you wanted to find out how long it would take to triple, you would just do the natural log of three as a numerator, or whatever that duration is. So, or to calculate duration. Any other questions? I assume the, this website takes the accurate formula and not just the rule of 72? So this is, it's a little bit different, and the reason why is because uh, you have the variables with uh, monthly contributions, which build up over time, and then you can change those by introducing some amount of compound interest by saying, year over year, I'm going to in increase this by 3%. So you've got double compounding, so there's probably not something, there might be a formula that does this, but this doesn't use that. But this is accurate, not our compressor. Yes, yes, exactly. This is using, actually calculating out all the intervals rather than using any sort of equation. Exactly, yep. Yep. Anything else? Cool, thanks guys.